We're gonna start this puppy up. Clear, prop. Welcome back to Tip of the Week. This week we're going to review the new important FAA regulation that went into effect the 1st of January 2020. This very significant change says that you are now required to use an ADSB compliant transponder, where transponders are required, of course. In this tip, I'm simply going to review the important details of this new rule and keep it very simple. You may already be familiar with these new transponder rules and if so, you are excused from watching the remainder of this video. For some pilots, this new regulation is a big deal. For others, it's a total non-issue. So which pilots of home builds should be concerned about this new regulation? The pilots that can ignore worrying about this new rule are the ones that don't have to use transponders in the first place. So what determines whether or not you have to use a transponder while flying? It all has to do about where you choose to fly. Let's review the airspace map and review exactly where transponders are required for flying. You can use any standard paper sectional map or one that is from an app on your phone like ForeFlight or similar. It's only in a few specific regions where you have to worry about using a transponder. Around large cities in the U.S. we have controlled airspaces clearly marked by rings around them defining the airspace boundaries, namely Class C and Class B. With Class B, there will be a mode C veil, which is another ring 30 nautical miles from the center. This is actually the boundary that defines where a transponder is required. In these two areas, Class C and Class B, a transponder is always required. No ifs, ands, or buts. This includes from the ground all the way up. There is no top limit for this requirement. So if you manage to stay away from these boundaries near large cities, then for the most part you do not need to be equipped with any transponder. This is the main takeaway of understanding when you need to have and use a transponder and when you don't. The other locations that require transponders which really don't affect most of us that fly home builds is Class A, which is above 10,000 feet, and 12 miles into the Gulf of Mexico. So let's summarize. If you're not going to fly in Class A, B, or C airspace, you are not required to have a transponder. Be sure to note that a transponder is not needed for Class D airspace, where we have hundreds of airports with towers. They are not shown on this map because that area is not a transponder issue. It's pretty simple to now understand where a transponder is required. By the way, this map is available on the FAA website. Now we need to talk about the new FAA regulation that has begun now, January 2020. First, the new regulation does not change where transponders are required to be used. What the new regulation says is that you can no longer use any transponder that is not ADSB compliant in the locations we just discussed that require transponders. To say it another way, if your transponder has not been replaced or upgraded to the new ADSB version, then do not fly in the class A, B, and C airspace we just discussed. It's just that simple. 
your transponder must be ADSB compliant if you wish to fly in class A, B, or C airspace. Is there any situation where you can use your old mode C or mode S transponder? Yes. You can use it outside of class A, B, and C airspaces that we've been discussing. It's outside of A, B, and C airspaces where a transponder is not required. For example, class D airspace or to use flight following. Keep your old transponder on except in class A, B, and C airspace to make yourself visible to radar. And because it is the law to keep your transponder on if your aircraft is equipped with one. So the moral of the story is don't throw away your old transponder. Keep it on. Use it. If you have to fly in class A, B, and C airspaces as discussed, there is no question that you must replace or purchase a new ADSB transponder system. But here is a tough question. If you do not normally fly in these required airspaces, let's say class B and C, should you purchase or upgrade to ADSB just for the heck of it? Before you run out and buy a new ADSB transponder, consider the implications of this new technology. Some of the differences between the new and the old may surprise you. Consider the following. Using the old Mode C transponder, you could fly along all day outside of Class B or C airspace in your home-built aircraft with your transponder on and squawking 1200 as a VFR pilot. To any and all ground radar stations that could see you, you were an anonymous aircraft blip on their radar screens. The only thing they could tell was your altitude and approximate location. The key here is that there was no method to identify you or your aircraft. Nothing wrong with that. Now, replace that Mode C transponder with the new ADSB transponder and consider the very same flight outside of Class B and C airspace as before. To any and all ground radar stations that can see you, everything is different this time. Your aircraft identity is now known. You cannot hide who you are. And your flight path with GPS precision is recorded in an FAA computer to be logged for eternity. You cannot disable or turn off this function, nor can you turn off your transponder by law. Every flight you take is potentially recorded with precise details. If you think this is not a big deal, consider the following. How would you feel if the government placed a GPS tracking device on your automobile and kept track of every trip you ever made and made that data available to the public? Would that be all right? Consider the popular smartphone app like Flight Aware. Anyone can watch the air traffic in the sky at any location in the entire country. How is this done? ADSB equipped aircraft. This means your aircraft is now ready to be tracked and monitored by the public with a free smartphone app. Some pilots of home-built aircraft will think this technology is a positive step in the right direction. The safety gain from being seen electronically while flying justifies any downsides. Others will take pause and consider there is a long-term price in privacy to pay. Reportedly, the FAA is using ADSB to monitor pilots whose flying has been reported to them for one reason or another. The FAA has inspectors that can monitor a suspect's and numbers flying activity 
as part of its investigation into pilots and their aircraft that have popped up on their enforcement radar. Remember, it's illegal to switch off a transponder in any controlled airspace. Now, don't get the wrong idea. I think the new ADS-B technology is fantastic. It does a lot of neat things, especially for safety and collision avoidance. There's no doubt about that. Plus the ability to see other aircraft on your relatively inexpensive ADS-B receiver display, like on ForeFlight or any of the other mapping programs. However, many of us home-built pilots live somewhere out in the country and we don't go into class A, B, or C, if ever, because the majority of our flying experience is out in class E, class D with towered airports, and even class G all over the place. And we don't need the expense of the ADS-B transponder. So maintaining the freedom and fun of flying safely as we desire out there without a GPS tracking around our necks is something that we appreciate and don't need the expense for. So I just want to make it clear, if you're one of those pilots that doesn't go into B or C, there is no need to get the new ADS-B technology and you can of course keep your old mode C if you already have one and use that as you travel outside of those areas. And there is good news for privacy advocates. A new program from the FAA called the PIA program allows you to hide your aircraft's identity from the public and the way this is done and it's a little bit convoluted is you can apply for an identifier from a third party so there may, may be a cost involved but you get a new aircraft identifier and program it into your ADSB unit so that when it transmits the code it gives cannot be looked up in the aircraft registry and that will prevent people the public, not the FAA, but the public from identifying you in real time as you fly. Now you got to follow the rules, but there is a way to do this, and of course you have to go through the verification after you put the new code into your ADSB that the right code is coming out, and there's a whole checklist on the FAA website for implementing this on an aircraft by aircraft basis. So that's a step in the right direction for uh, maintaining privacy for your flights from the rest of the public. There are a number of steps that need to be followed after you install the ADSB hardware and if there's any interest in what those steps are and what the communication you must have with the FAA to verify your installation Leave some notes in the comments below and we can have another tip on those details. And there you have it. Now you know the important details of this new regulation. It's a good time to consider if there is a transponder in your future, knowing that you have choices available. It's also a good time to get back to building.